John, how are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing much. fine. I just, I just want to click on continue. Yeah, there we go. I'm doing fine, Mary, and it's great talking great. to you, especially about Uncunyal. Yeah, thank uh, you so much for... you anyway, really, you know. Yeah, thank you so much for, for taking the time out. We really appreciate this. So I all. suppose we'll start back at the start. You're, you're, you're from Lewisburg. You grew up in the village of Lewisburg. Is that right? I did indeed. Um, and, and to a certain extent, you know, um, uh, with the Cunyal. Now, I was in secondary school when the first issue of Uncunyal came about, you know. Um, yes, I've grown up in Lewisburg and I suppose the Cunyal has been very, very important to me. And I just noticed looking through some of the Cunyals and I have every copy. There were some articles there that meant an awful lot to me, really, you know. Yeah. So perhaps if we just talk about the background to the Cunyal and what brought... Uh, brought it about and who brought it about brilliant and um, of course the, the the who part is easy enough it was father leo morahan and father leo was one of the morahan family his parents were local primary teachers and both of them taught me in primary school mrs morahan while i was in i think low infants and high infants and um, then when i was in what third fourth fifth and sixth um father leo's dad and he re he retired if i remember rightly in 1958 and i think he died around 1959 at the edibles anyway father leo himself he was a member of a large family uh, he was born in in um, 1926 and um, he went to st Giles college in tum he went to st mary's college in galway for a while and he was ordained in Maynooth in 1952 for the galway diocese now, while he was a student in Maynooth, as I understand it, he had a conversation with Father McGarry, who was one of the professors there and was from County Mayo, from the Archdiocese of Chum. And for the Leo had this thing in his mind about um, doing something for the parish in the form of a magazine, that it would be something that would be very, very important to the parish. And it has turned out in that way, really. So he was ordained, as I say, in 1952. He went off about his business to Galway. And by 1959, we get the first issue of Uncunyal. Now, how did it come about? It was Father Leo, really. But he produced it under the auspices of the Lewisburg Munchen Achira. Yeah. Now, a so brief tell us note, about the Munchen Achira, John. Uh, indeed, that yeah, was the new movement that came uh, about. As well, well, actually, the movement, uh, we're, we're talking about 1959, Mary. That movement was founded in 1937 okay. by uh, Canon John Hayes. He was PP, parish priest of Bancha in County Tipperary. Yes. And um, the aim of Munchen Achira, uh, the people of the countryside, if you like, this would be a rural movement, really. Okay. And the aim was to foster the spiritual, social and economic well-being of rural Ireland. Wow. And it was a very, uh, it was a great success in the various things uh, it was doing. I believe, if my memory serves me right, that Father James McDyer, up in Glen Cullum Kill in, in, in Donegal, was part of that movement as well. Yes. And that was an outstanding success, as were other things. So therefore, Father Leo approached the Lewisburg Guild of Munchenachira and they backed him for the production of the first Cunyal, which came about in, at Christmas in 1959. Now, Father Leo was teaching at St. Mary's College in Galway at the time, and I was a, I just got into second year at St. Mary's College at the time. So that's, in a sense, is how I, I associate myself with Anne Cunyal. Yeah, yeah, um, gosh. Now, it's interesting, though, because while the, the, the first issue uh, came out and was very successful and so on, in a limited way in those days, back in 1959, mm -hmm. it kind of ran into a heavy storm, if you like, as far as Munchen Achira is concerned. To make a long story short, Munchen Achira didn't continue with Uncunyal, and I was lucky enough to come across the minute books, or a minute book mm -hmm. of Munchen Achira from that time, and... At a meeting on February the 13th of 1961, when the second quenil would be in its gestation period, let's put it that way, uh, the note states, publication of another, sorry, it says, on quenil uh, number one has been a success. And we know that. Publication of another has been on the agenda for some time. And I am sorry to report, through lack of interest after a special meeting had been called, the meeting had to put it on the long finger. Uh, April the 10th, 1961, the meeting was informed that Father Leo Morhan was going ahead with the magazine. So he was going ahead, um, he was going to sail the ship on his own bat, so to speak. So Munchen Achira, for some reason, lack of interest, didn't want to have any more uh, to do with it. And I think that was a great pity. And then again, 
maybe it wasn't a great pity yeah. because as we know, Uncunyal has been an outstanding success yeah. right up to the present day. There are a few things I would mention about it. Very much part and parcel of um, this area. And it has had an editorial board or a management committee or call it what you like, right up to and including 2019. And in 2019, we had myself, I was the outgoing editor at the time, and I have re retired now. Maurice Stanton is the secretary. Uh, Breda McGinn, assistant, sorry, Mary Kane, the treasurer. Breda McGinn, the assistant treasurer. And the committee would be myself, Maurit Stanton, Mary Kane, Breedon McGinn, Margaret Gallagher and John Joe Kilcoyne. Now, uh, they were the final group, if you like. Mm -hmm. They were kind of combinations of different people as the years went by. So, as I say, it was a great success, but it, it was a success to a great extent, largely because there were sponsors. About 25 people uh, put up a certain amount of money and they were the sponsors. They were the, yeah. the, the life members, if you like. Yeah. So that was the seed money. Mm -hmm. uh, because you need money for everything yes. and it was the Mayo News uh, who, did, who did the printing. That passed over to Berries because Joe Berry owned the Mayo News and that passed over to Berries and Berries have been the printers ever since and indeed I must say that Berries have been very very decent and uh, easy to get on with. Yeah you've, you've a, built a relationship a, there a over the years I'm sure. Work, yes. Yeah you've built they've a good been, relationship. They've been very very yeah. good really you know. Now also very, very important, were our representatives in England and America. Mm. Um, and they were strewn, if you like, if I can use that word, all over the place. You know, we had Mary Richter or Mary Dunn from the noun in the United States. And um, she passed away, got a good tour. And it was uh, Therese Gibbons um, from, from Finon who, who took it over. Yeah. And she's been excellent as well. But they had, if you like, they had representatives all over the United States, as were different people in England. So the criminals would go out to them, go out to a, cent a central person, and that central person then would disseminate the criminals. So it's very, very important. But right. one of the things that has happened, and it happens in life, and it is this, that those who are buying the criminals and were eager to have the criminals way back in 1959 and 1961 and into the 60s and the 70s, they have become older now. I mean, in 1959, I was all of, I think, 13 years old. You were old. a gosser. <laughs> I was only a lad, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then the years went by, 50 years went by, and 60 years went by, you know. Yeah. And, and um, we all get older, as they did in the United States and as they did in England. If you take Father Ger Herney, for example, God be good to him, he was one of our agents over there. And, and, and um, he passed away some years ago. Yeah. as have an awful lot of people so that the 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 the, um, the, the reading population if you like yeah. uh, has passed on to a goodly extent yeah. so it has become more difficult uh, as time went by and of course life has become different as well you yeah. know yeah. more and more people are zooming now as we are more and more yeah. people are, are on gmail and more and more mm. people are uh, reading the mayo news online you know, yeah, over in, in San Francisco and, and New York and all of those places. Yeah. And what I did, I, I choose for myself, excuse me, the, the more important, or what, the, the articles that meant an awful lot to me. Yes, lovely. And if you're start, starting at the beginning and going to the end, uh, at the beginning, there was an article in the very, very first one called Second Mass. Yes. Second Mass in Lewisburg. Oh. That is a fantastic article. Beautiful read. Because I was serving Mass. You know, yeah. there, were, there were two masses on Sunday. There was the nine o'clock and there was the 1130. And Father Leo wrote this and, and he talked about the 1130 mass. He had already said yeah. mass himself. So he went to mass and he just went in among the people. And in those days, Mary, and you won't remember this, you were the men on one side yes. and you had the women on the other side. And it was as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So our, gra our parents, our grandparents, they went yeah. to mass together, but he went to the left, she went to the right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. it was all in left. And men, men, or men and women, parishioners, they said the rosary perhaps during yeah. Mass. So they said, said their own prayers during Mass. Mm -hmm. They attended Mass and, and they were a wonderful people. Now, the second thing that struck me uh, was at, towards the end of the cranial, in a sense, the last, the last two issues, I think, an article that struck me was um, two articles by Sean Cadden. Yes. The first one was the impact of the 1851 evictions on the parish of Lewisburg where 14 townlands, and he goes very deeply into all of this, 14 townlands were cleared, you know? Mm -hmm. Just to give you an idea of, of, of um, 
population in these 14 townlands back in what we call the West, back at the mountains, sweeping around right to Glan Keen and, 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 and so on. Uh, in 1841, there were 1,501 people living in those 14 townlands. In 1851, immediately after the Great Hunger, it was down to 932. Wow. And by 1861, no, the claims were in 1851, by 1861, it was down to 87. So there was nobody there except a few people and sheep. It was a huge sheep farm. And therefore um, Talabon became known as the Wastelands as well because of... Yes. You know, well, indeed, actually, Talabon, that's exactly what the, the, the Irish translation of Wastelands. If you go back to the uh, earlier maps, to yeah. the medieval maps, it's down as either Bishop's Land or Wasteland. Yeah. You know, the yeah. Irish word, the, the, the verb would be Vaughan and Cheer. Mm -hmm. They wasted the country. The country it turned yeah. it white, I suppose, maybe, really, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now, the, the, to follow up on that article, Sean Cadden came along and he explained the resettling of all of those areas in 1923 mm -hmm. after the Free State, our own Free State came into mm -hmm. being. We had the Land Commission from the British Times, you see, and the Land Commission found itself like a bit like Nama, <laughs> the huge yeah. area of land yeah. and what we do with it. So they resettled it, about 40 acres, insofar as they could find the people who were there originally. So mm. they peopled it again, if you like, yeah. and it has been, you know, uh, an outstanding success. Yeah. One of the interesting uh, side stories of all of that is that when Killeen Church was being mooted way back in the uh, 1890s. <clears throat> Excuse me. The question was, well, where will we site this new church? And a lot of people wanted to go on, of course, and that was natural enough. But Ashbish McKevely, a benign man, he argued and argued successfully that the people weren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was it was settled in 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 um, uh, in Killeen. And, and as you know, it is, it is, it is there in Killeen ever yeah. since, really, you know. I like the fact that it's in Killeen because, and I'll tell you why, Mary, um, it's beside the, the, the cemetery is there. Yes. I think the cemetery was very much alone when yeah. the chapel in Gowlon was on, on, on the go. And then perhaps the chapel in Gowlon didn't, wouldn't have suited everybody from closer to, say, Dr. McKeown and those places, you know. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah. All of my people are on, on both sides of the, of the family, on yours and you know mm -hmm. they're all buried in Killeen mm -hmm. really you know yeah. that's, that, that's where we go to to, yeah. to say our, our, so our, the, the, our prayers the graveyard the at Killeen predates the church just for those that will be watching this there the graveyard was actually a Killeen it really predates the church oh, the predates church the church it, later. Does indeed, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 it does indeed there were other articles uh, that I found extremely interesting one is an article called Altramon written by Father Leo himself, but he changes the names. Now, an Altamon is um, 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 a, a child without, without, uh, without parents. And I remember, I remember Willie Cummins. Willie Cummins was, he was taken, taken in by the Morhan family way back in the early 1950s. Mm -hmm. And Father Leo and himself, if you like, in a sense, grew up together. And he's written this fantastic article. Now, he changes the names, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But I remember, I can see exactly who he's talking about. Yeah. This chap, Willie Moore, and he was a couple of years ahead of me in primary school. And, and there's a memory from my time. Another um, uh, set of, of articles would be Letters from Home by Mother. Mm -hmm. Mother writing to Johnny or whoever it was. In, yes, indeed. It's just very, and, and all local, local news and local, yes. you know. Another set of articles were uh, done more recently, in more recent criminals, um, the um, people who lived in Lewisburg town at different times, yes. the 1930s and the 1950s and so on. And it's very interesting there to see changes as well, because there were names then, when I was a kid growing up, there were names then that don't exist to know. Yeah. you know yeah it's, it's true. changed it's completely true. Now, names you know. that are gone families that have you know absolutely or moved away yeah. another series of articles articles was done by michael lines of the colony he lives mm. in, in galway now yes and and he has a lovely style of writing and i think he has published those in in in, in a book and i've yeah. come across them yet you know he but he gives indeed. the history of the colony yeah. and he gives he gives the history of his own family yeah. and and how they lived and what they had and what neighbours they had and how they visited, yeah. you know, and he's very, very good uh, at that. 
and there's a course a certain amount of of um, articles in irish but not enough i'm afraid yes that was yeah. what i was going to mention that to you john that was um something that jumped out at me too over the years it was almost a bilingual magazine in the earlier years in the earlier you know? days you're quite right and, and even some of the the beautiful recorded old style writing the irish writing i thought that, that you know was just yes. fabulous in it yes, as indeed. well with the old yes, letters indeed. Which yeah. we would you try to teach us Irish in, in school, secondary yeah. school, John tried to teach us, but it was a whole different Irish way. It was a whole different yeah. Irish, it was. What the department introduced, you see, around the time, well, in the 60s, I suppose, was known as the Kaijon, the standardized Irish. Okay. So I grew up with the old style of, of writing Irish. And you have it in, in two articles, uh, and Glen in Orto you may by um a uh, Scanlon girl, she became a primary teacher. She might have been a primary teacher yeah. at the time. It's a number one anyway. She mm -hmm. was from Benown and I think she be became a primary teacher and lived in Wicklow all her life. Mm -hmm. And Glenna North Ogame, about this area. Yes. A lovely flow of Irish, really, you know. Yeah. Another one was by Clem Lines. You, you might remember Clem. Yes, I remember Clem. Clem Lines, Clem, yes, married yeah. to Mosty Lines. Again, she was a primary teacher and a sister of Father Leo. Yes. And it's the number one. So those are the things that uh, struck me now in order to talk to you, Mary, you know. Having that connection to home and again, without place, without people in a place, there would be no place. So therefore, That's those true. stories that are recorded, I mean, this is a huge archive to have a volumes yep. of 29, yeah, I think, publications yeah. of On Crinial yeah. to have now digitalized on our website. But the, the fact that the foresight was there with Father Leo, with Minchinachira, with the subsequent committees or whatever you want to call them that came mm -hmm. along and yourselves that are here now with the Helm, that continued that candle, that continued that flame, yeah. just recording yeah. our life, recording our people from our place. And I think that yeah. is invaluable. I think that's what's so important is keeping that connection alive. And the Which fact is that media. We've had that time just to stop the running and the chasing and just breathe and yeah. just take a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that connection, like as you said, the the, the the recordings, we're talking about the Irish words. I absolutely adore whoever came up with the idea of the word, of the keeping your word. Um, and yeah, the old indeed. Irish word. Indeed. I mean, words that we grew up with, some are familiar, some I've never heard of. But right. every day we were doing a word and we were thinking, what? You know, <laughs> that's a familiar word. How does that mean this or that mean that? Yeah. And it's, it's just, we've, we've learned a lot, I suppose, during the last year, 18 months, and we're still, unfortunately, as yeah. you said, on Zoom, yeah. we're not physically yeah. being able to meet and, and, and chat. But I think, I think it's so important that not just that the Quinion is digitalized, but that people see the value of actually recording, be it Indeed. in a book Indeed. or be it yeah. online. It doesn't matter. Just put if it you, on paper. If you consider, Mary, if you consider all the, all the names of all the fields and all the townlands mm -hmm. and all the villages, Remember the poem, Ruachani Imluch Runa and Pulglas? Yeah, yeah. To ask on Imluch Runa and Pulglas by Achanis Custodore. The Dukes, Karaniski by Runathan Cross by Devlin, Bunlach and its bay. They're all Irish words. Yeah. You know? Bunlach, Bunlacha, you know? And so on. Tall of Bawn, we talked about it. Clunshi, the little fields. Yes. Killing itself, you know? Uh, so we're very immersed in Irish, you know, but not everybody appreciates that, you know. But it's, it's just, you know, as a child growing up, there was no real interest. And I think we only really come to appreciate that as we become adults and as we true. grow older ourselves. And we really do actually think more about sense of place and, and pride of place, Indeed. I suppose, and where we're from and really appreciate yeah. what has been done. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you a very, very quick little story. When I came back, um, Eleanor got me good to myself, we came back in 1972. Now, I'd spent many, many years away, especially in Galway and so on, you know. But anyway, after we came back and we settled here in Milan and so on, I think one of the first funerals that was on, my mother said to me, John, she said, you should go to that funeral. And I said, why? Well, they're friends of yours. <laughs> you know? So I said, you know, I, I thought about it. And I said, yes, of course, she, she was right, you know. So I set out then to get to know every combination and permutation of cousins and friends, second cousins and so on. And I think I've cracked it. I think I really, I really can recognize if I see somebody in the pub or if I see somebody in mess, I know that they're 
yeah. second person's of mine or whatever, really, you know. It's yeah. very important, Mary, really, you know. Oh, it this is, sense think. of people and sense of place. It you really know? is. Now, we don't have to live in each other's pockets or anything like no, that. No, no, exactly, you know? yeah. But it's nice uh, to know and just be aware. To know it. Yeah, just to be aware. To I said, so that's so Sandy Crendel, Mary. On, as I say, I've retired. I, I cannot find anybody. There's nobody to take over, it would seem. Um, oh, that's such a shame. Because I was hoping come, you were going to tell us that there'd be a new, a new cunyal coming out next year, and people get writing well, and the get to, is, the pens the way to it paper. Is, Mary, you get, to, I know, but you get to the stage, you see, where you have to say no. Oh, you know? Of course. I mean, yeah. I, I'm retired. I'm retired from teaching now for for uh, I think it's 14 years. Are you, you know? really 14 years? I am indeed. Wow. I am indeed yeah. yeah. So it's it's I'm 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 no chicken anymore, really. You yeah. know, yeah. and. Um, so I would leave it to somebody else, really. You know. Please, God, somebody will will come forward. Somebody and might come forward. Somebody, yeah. you know, or, or two people or three people or whatever it takes. That, that it really, Indeed, yeah. you know, as I said, Indeed. it would be nice to see it continue. But if they do, I will give them all the help in the world that I, I can. I was just going to say, there's no better mentor available, you know, to, to, Indeed, to, guide, yeah. to guide it into the future, yeah. for sure. Because yeah. as I said, I, I know while we're, while we're digitalized and while we're online and everything, there's nothing nicer than being able to take up you know, a book in your hand and yeah. actually just right, be yeah. able to smell That's it right. and see it. And and I want to meant to ask you about this as well, actually, John. Is this your mum or your grandmother? That's my grandmother. That's your grandmother. My okay. grandmother. My father. That's my father's mother. Wow. And, and your the daughters? two girls are the two girls. The girl beside her is Nicola. She's out in Tokyo. And the next, the little one is is Olivia, who's in Essex in England now. Oh my gosh! Imagine yeah. how special. And she had made she had made a big a big uh, bedspread. Yes. If I remember rightly. Yes. Uh, that's herself, she yeah. was an excellent person. She was she was originally she was Scott from Shre. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Amazing. Indeed. Well, that that's it, John. Thank you so so much. And look at whatever the future holds. We appreciate and we want to say thank you as well for keeping that flame That's alive and for keeping it going and for your time this evening as well. And we'll talk soon. You're more than welcome, Mary. God bless you.